Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews, temporary name. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Dispatches from Elsewhere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, at the end of last episode, they found that picture showing that Clara's mural was real, meaning that Clara is real, that this isn't just a game. But obviously, that turns into a big, a big debate because obviously, Peter's all about, we got to find Clara. Fredwin is like, no, we got to unravel this conspiracy. Clara isn't real. Like, you guys are being duped. Janice is like, oh, this seems kind of dangerous. Why don't we just go back to playing the game? And Simone just kind of, she tends to, she's leaning more towards Peter. I think she's not quite sure where she stands, but it's interesting to see like the four different corners of this situation of like everyone kind of being like steadfast in their belief in one direction. And Simone seems like she can lean any direction, but I think more so than anything, she kind of leans towards Peter's direction of believing. She might not believe as much, but she does kind of believe that, you know, Peter believes. So it's kind of an interesting situation of like, trying to figure this out and so basically what they're going to try and do because it's the last day of the game so they're all trying to figure out like okay so if we're going to be figuring this whole situation out because uh, Simone suggests if you want to find an artist you follow the trails of their art and obviously for Fred when it's like we have to re-go back to every place we've ever been if we want to unravel this mystery so initially Simone wants to go with Peter and then Janice and Fred when but we're supposed to go elsewhere but it's like no. Nope. And Janice was super against it because it's like because of what he did. Fred was like, she's like, he did something really bad. And Fred was like, eh, not not really. So Janice refuses to go with Fred when so Peter's like, fine, I'll go with Fred when. And someone's like, wait, what? Because to be fair, it's like they've been the mo they've been partners throughout all of this, so they've always kind of stuck together. So it's kind of been them until it's kind of like, oh, they kind of shift things up now, which I thought was kind of really nicely done because this gives us an opportunity to kind of like mesh other teams together. So Peter and Fredwin, like they have their uh, stuff together and obviously so does Janice and uh, Simone. So I just thought that was kind of a nice thing. But to me immediately, I'm like, oh, because I think it's because for Simone, she knows how invested Peter is in finding Clara. And he's like, no, it's okay. You know, me and Fred will spend time together and like Simone and Janice. So uh, let's start off with Simone and Janice. They go back to the bar and everything. And um, actually, it's a bar that Janice knows. And it's like, wait, you've been here before? And uh, they're asking questions about Clara, but it's kind of no good until they run into this dude named Boris. And apparently he knows Janice. And so they have history and stuff like that. And it's like, yo, what's this all about? Uh, I even love at one point, um, it's like, oh, who are you good looking? And then um, uh, Simone is like, ew. And Jen is like, stop it, Boris. Ew, really, just stop it. Just stop it. And so basically, and I love that whole thing of like, he's like, oh, my memory isn't what it used to be. Not, you know, maybe if you kiss me, I'll remember something. And Janice is like, ew. And even Simone's like, ew, gross. Don't. And he's like, he's being dirty about it. It's like, holy crap. Um, but he kind of basically, you know, uh, like, and then Janice orders some shots for them. And then like Janice like knocks her back. I'm like, yo, this is cause even Simone's kind of getting into it. Cause she's like, holy crap. I'm seeing like a completely different side of you. And he, cause he was like, oh, we like, you know, it's because like, he's kind of like saying like something happened between them in the past. And Janice is like, no, it didn't. And he's like, yes, it did. She's like, no, it didn't. But now I think there's part of it that's wondering like, cause she's like, he's like, you owe me. It was, it, no, she was like, you owe me. And he's like, what? For the, the shot or the spot? And it's kind of like, so something did happen between them. But I think it's, I'm wondering, is it that, because I, I I love that that's still a thing of like, the moment Boris showed up, like younger Janice like popped up too to be like, oh yeah, you, we know Boris. Uh, but I think it's because it's that thing of like, Janice kind of forgot a lot about her, her life prior to her getting married. So I think a lot of that's kind of a blur to her. So I don't think she realizes who she was because I think it's like her younger self had said, like you kind of let go of a lot of your own identity once you got married. You kind of fit, fit into this mold of who you needed to be at that time and not just being yourself. And so I thought that was such an interesting, you know, element, obviously, to kind of continue on that because she was like a feminist. Uh, she would, like, did like this spoken word thing too. She was an activist and stuff like that. So a side of herself that no one's really seen it, like, oh, you're kind of a badass and everything Janice so they ultimately end up uh leaving uh finding uh and I love as they're leaving she's like oh you're the best uh Boris you're the best well actually no you're not you're nowhere close but you know but essentially Boris had pointed him in the right direction of like all right here's another one of her art pieces of Clara's that you can find you one of the murals um at the same time like we have 
it might have been first, I think, I can't remember, the place where, like, the the um, indoctrination um, took place with, like, um, Octavio Oto, Peter Hewitt, special with that room. That might have popped up first, because I know the next place, that might have been later, I can't remember, I'm probably mixing it up in my head, but the other place they went is where Peter and Simone had met each other for the first time. He was like, yeah, this is where we met, it was like a magical place, you know, she scared me, she still actually does, but in a good way, and he's kind of kicking it um, some stuff over, and I love this line from Fred when it was like, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. If she gives you you her heart, don't take a magic marker and kind of write all over it. And Peter was like, that was oddly specific. And Fred was like, no more distractions. Come on. I was like, that's interesting. So, like, he was in love one point in time. But for him, it's just, I guess the way he is, his kind of idiosyncrasy has kind of gotten away. And so it was almost like this person gave it. And it's like he kind of wrote all over it, just kind of like, you know, he wanted things kind of his way and it probably jeopardized the relationship. So it seemed like that's what that was coming from. And I was like, oh, and it was like a very like poetic way to kind of put that too. I, I thought that was such an interesting um, aspect. And obviously it's like, oh yeah, this is where we dance with uh, Bigfoot and everything. It's like, oh, here's that phone and everything. But the phone um, isn't the same. And obviously they're fighting over the phone. I could love Peter being like, oh, Commander 14. And then, um, uh, for everyone takes the phone he's like I was just I'm just kidding no one's there and he's like this ain't no time to play Peter and I love in that moment you see Peter just kind of smile a little bit and then that smile kind of goes away for uh, but now they think they're being followed because like someone had told like someone's on the other side like oh we're always watching you get back on course to play the game what I really like about the Peter and um, Fred Wynn dynamic is the fact is that Fred Wynn is kind of like the bossy member of kind of being able to like, oh, I've got everything figured out. Like you kind of shut up and follow my lead type of thing. It's like, oh, like this is the place where him and Janice were before uh, when it came to the uh, Jejun thing while uh, Peter and because uh, we never actually got to see what um, Fred Wynn and Janice were ever up to because we only saw what Peter and Simone were up to with the Elsewhere Society. Uh, and everything and I love uh, that whole situation of like they get there and like he's like oh I'm gonna check my memory palace and uh, you have Peter be like oh you're gonna do that for me he's like no I don't have enough time it's like but you talk Janice and he's like I don't have time to kind of go all charity when it comes to my memory uh, palace and teaching stuff I'm like that's actually kind of interesting and a little sweet because it's like oh he only taught Janice he didn't teach anyone else uh, just because he's like oh that's because it pertained to a clue but it's like I don't know it feels like there might be a little bit more to that but uh he goes into it, and obviously Peter's just kind of like peed off, and I love him kind of being off elsewhere, just being like uh, pissed. He's like, oh, like, oh, he's like, oh, he's like, if you want to do something, basically make sure my blood sugar doesn't get too low. He's like, you asking me to get you a snack? And it's just like, he's like, you want me to get you a snack? He's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I'm just quiet. You know, he's like, there's no I in team. There's no I in elsewhere society. There's no I in elsewhere. <laughs> I love that. And he's like, oh, you want you want a snack? And I got your snack right here. I even love later on when he goes like, yeah, I got this for you. I, it was me meant to be passive aggressive, but I don't feel that way anymore. Not unless you actually want it. Uh, but obviously, uh, Fredwin had gone inside of his mind palace. And even that moment of seeing Janice and her kind of waving, I was like, oh, that's sweet. Uh, but the fact is, he was trying to remember like what he was missing. But lo and behold, who is he seeing in his mind palace? Clara, he's like, no, you're not real. This isn't real. But every time like he kept seeing her and then like his mind palace kind of starts from the beginning, almost like he was trapped in this loop. And he's like, what are you trying to say? And luckily, Peter was there to kind of hold him because he was like, I'm missing something. And like Fredwin kind of got frustrated. I think with just the way his brain and his mind works, like he doesn't like feeling like he's missing something because he feels like he's got to be the one that knows everything. And if he doesn't know everything, he's like he's missing something. I, I know I do apologize because it's going to be all over the place. I meant to talk about it. I love that transition from um, when um, they're like sneaking into like uh, that museum or whatever. And then it like zooms out. It kind of reminds me of like Final Fantasy 7 when it zooms out to show you Midgar. Only reason why that's fresh in my mind is because of the whole demo uh, that came out for the remake and everything. But it kind of reminded me of that. And it zooms out and you're like you see like it's a, a miniature model of outside and you see Fred Wynn and Peter walk, walking inside of the uh, uh, museum. I, I just thought that was such a neat like transition. I was like, oh, once again, I'm, ne I'm never one of those cinematography nerds. No offense to anyone that is. It's just, that's just not my cup of tea. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, I, I enjoy breaking down the magic of stuff. It's just, but sometimes like transitional stuff like that because Legion had a whole, like the TV show Legion had a whole bunch of transitional like scenery stuff that they would do like that. They change the aspect ratio, turn stuff to black and white. I trip out about that. So like some cinematography stuff, I really pay attention to other stuff. It's just kind of 
blurs in the background for me because I try not to ruin the movie or TV magic for me, you know? But that's just how I operate. But circling back to what I was saying, I'm sorry, uh, but I did like the fact is that Peter kind of was hugging Fred when was able to kind of calm him down. He's like, I appreciate that. And so uh, he hands him, uh, Peter hands him the fruit and it turns out it's got, you know, lettering on it. What was it? Uh, Bender um, Eldon. And it's like, oh, like apparently it, this it's a place that owns a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff they've come across. It's been there at the indoctrination room on the telephone. It's been everywhere. So the and then Peter is like, right, because they own consumer products and they own a lot of like uh science experiment stuff so it's like so everything that's how like this whole game was able to be funded because such a large organization or you know company owns everything that is able to afford all these places because uh oh because i uh, dude i completely skipped over like fredwin's place where he kind of showed his diagram of all the stuff that he had been working on and the reason why he, he thought it didn't make any sense because like all these places were expensive because even like Clara's house, if it really was Clara's house, was a very expensive house. But that explains like why they were able to afford all this stuff because they owned it in the first place. And I love it for everyone to be like, how do you know that? How do you, you knew something, Peter, which was super patronizing. But he was like, how did you know that? And it's like for Peter, it's like because his company, uh, because um, Bender Eldon owns the company he used to work for. You know? Then there's that situation with... Um, Simone and Janice and they come across like that picture like on the wall it seems incomplete and I love Janice being like oh maybe we have to scrape something off and it's like no Jen it's like this is an actual painting and then like uh, Simone sees the artist from like her episode again I was like right because that was a while back we haven't seen that since episode two to see that kind of come back for her because she's like I'm trying to figure this out but I can't quite figure it out and I thought it was kind of actually neat it's like I draw myself and went like well how do I do that and she's like by drawing yourself on the outside from the inside. And then I was like, the moment that happened, I was like, oh, are we going to do a perspective thing? And it totally ends up being that whole situation. But like, you know, uh, Simone kind of figures out like what window to look through. And so they go to that lady's eyes uh, like, hey, we were, we were from the Elsewhere Society Historical Elsewhere Historical Society. And the lady is like, no, you're not. And, you know, so they were able to kind of worm their way in because Janice is actually a really good talker. Uh, which is kind of the interesting pairing considering the fact is, uh, which I guess that's kind of the whole point because like, you know, Janice is kind of the talker and Simone isn't. Uh, Peter kind of doesn't have a lot of confidence. Fredwin kind of has maybe too much confidence. That's probably me reading too much into it, but I, I think that's kind of an, it, the dynamic they're kind of going for. But uh, they get inside the lady's house and it's like, I'm going to hold on to this until you two get out. Till you, until you leave, I'll hold on to your um, IDs. And she's like, oh, that sounds... Now, I forgot what Janice said. It was essentially kind of like, oh, that sounds not creepy or not. Like, it's like, oh, she's going to hold on to that till you leave. Mm, interesting. Um, but uh, I love what, because obviously they end up tearing um, the the stuff off the wall because like she had basically, the lady had been living here for a very, very long time. And basically pulling it off, they end up like, I love perspective stuff like that. I'm not much of an art person, but I love like background and foreground perspective stuff. Like you have to look at things from a certain angle to see the full picture. Um, like I said, I know it's an art thing. I know it more, I mean, cause it still applies, but I was, cause I'm about to say it's a video game thing. They use it a lot in puzzles and video games. I know uh, where it's like, you have to look at certain from, things from a certain angle to get the full picture. But I mean, obviously video games are art, you know, there's art within video games and then themselves, uh, they themselves are art. But I just, I love it. Besides also, it was a dragon. I'm, I'm cuckoo for dragons. Cuckoo for dragons. I don't know why I said that. I should, why did I just say crazy? I'm sorry, but I, I love dragons. They're like one of my, one of, if not my favorite mythical creatures. So I really, you know, love that. And it's like, oh, it's really, you know, kind of a beautiful thing. And so they're looking through like, okay, like all the different people that had leased that in particular apartment. And I love that talk between Janice and, um, you know, Simone was like, you know, you're kind of a kind of a badass, Janice. And she's like, maybe I was, or maybe I'm turning into one. And I'm like, oh, that's so dope. Um, because obviously for um, Simone, she appreciates that she really likes the fact is that, you know, that Janice is able to kind of like say what she like talk to people, you know, and it's like, it, obviously it doesn't come that easy to her. And it's like, oh, because, you know, and Janice is like, because you are worried what people might think of you or not like you. And she was kind of like, yes, and yes. And it's like, well, you just be true to yourself, you know, you and your dimples and your really, really long legs. And when uh, and that was super adorable when um, 
Simone smiles and you do see the, her dimples and everything. Uh, but I thought that was super adorable. And in fact, this Janice was like, if they have a if they have a problem uh, with you, you tell them to come talk to me. I'm like, ah. Once again, I talk about it all the time. I am a sucker for friendship. So when we get into some like friendship stuff and some bonding, I'm like, ah, oh, I, I, I get all mushy and gushy about it. I love that in storytelling. So this episode is like right up my alley. Just, I mean, in general, like the show has just been up my alley because I love characters and friendships and bonds. Uh, bring it up every time. Your Kingdom Hearts reference of the day. Because I, I reference this thing all the time. That's why I love Kingdom Hearts so much because it's all about friendship and stuff like that. I'm a sucker for that, you know? So... Uh, but they end up finding out that uh, Clara's last name was Torres. So it's like, okay, so now they know that she's real. And so they end up going off looking into some files about her. And I thought was pretty interesting. And um, it was this neat thing where Janice was like, oh, yeah, because she remembers how to do all this stuff because they were at the library looking this stuff up. It's like, yeah, like she remembers working on stuff with like helping son, uh, her son Ben work on projects. And so mom was like, yeah, my mom helped me do the same thing, too. It's like, yeah, that's what moms do, you know. So but I think it was interesting because for um, Simone, she kind of like because even uh, Janice was like, why are you doing like what's the point? you know, of all this, and, you know, someone's like, you mean in an existential way, like, in general, and then Janice was like, no, why is this so important to you, and it's because for her, she basically found common ground with Clara, because Clara kind of had a tough point in life, and just kind of, I think, Clara kind of found her own way to fit in into life, found her own place in it. And I think Simone, who kind of strives for the same thing, kind of feeling a little out of sorts, out of place, she can, you know, especially it's like, oh, you've been through some stuff that kind of got you to where you are and you kind of carved out your own way in life. Uh, despite everything that you kind of been through, I think, you know, for Simone, she kind of clicks with that. She's like, obviously, I would know nothing about having a hard time in life. She kind of makes light of it, but obviously it's because she does know, you know. And they ended up looking into it and finding out that Clara, uh, the news report was about her being taken by a like nearby people saw her taken by a lady in black. Uh, but then it also shows that she was locked up in a mental institute uh, because it's like, but then it's like, oh, so that, does that mean Clara had like mental issues or something like that? Which is like, I thought I was like, oh, that's interesting. And it's like, oh, poor her. It's like. Uh, cause it, I get, and even Janice said like, oh, it could happen to anybody. I was like, oh, that sounded like the fact that you said that sounded a little personal. We'll get to that in a, uh, a little later on. But I thought that was interesting that, you know, line. So it's kind of like, so it's suggesting like maybe Clara was kind of like had her own mental issues at the time that maybe like, that's what might be like, cause that's what I was starting to think. I was like, does that mean she was kind of locked up? For, has she been locked up these past 20 years did like the Jejun decide or in particular Octavio uh, kind of get her locked up or something that's what I was wondering has she been locked up this entire time is that why no one could find her I mean to be fair they did a good job of like erasing her from the records and stuff like that too so obviously it runs a little um, deeper and all that but Janice kept noticing like the dude that's from the uh, Jejun uh, Institute because he was there in episode 2 or was that 1 I think, no, that, that was episode one, I believe. Um, he's a dude, he was drinking chocolate milk at the bar, and when uh, Simone and Janice were there earlier in the episode, he was there too, And but Janice took notice of him, and it was like, hmm, I wonder what that's all about. I mean, she's probably picking up, like, this guy's following us around. So, all the while that's happening, you know, uh, basically... Uh, Fred Wynn and Peter are trying to break into Peter's work but and I love that he's like oh this seems like a, uh, Fred Wynn's like this is an Ethan Hunt type of situation you're Ethan and I'm Hunt and they're like you ready you, is you down for that he's like yes and then Fred Wynn's like unless you want to be Hunt but you look more like an Ethan and like Peter just kind of doesn't care either way and so they go inside and it's like oh hey Peter sorry about the whole you getting terminated thing and he's like yeah I'm here for a friend's birthday party he's like who Huh? Excuse me? Oh, did did you say who? Uh, John. John from accounting? Yeah, John. Yeah, he well, he's in accounting now, but he wasn't before. He was, you know, uh, he was he was in the mail room and he worked his way up. And I remember when he got that, you know, the job. I was like, oh, congratulations, dude, for getting it. I love like Peter playing into it, but I also love Fred when kind of coming to his aid. It's like, yeah, Peter just kind of, you know, I'm his what was it, his life coach, and I'm kind of helping him through all this to kind of basically explain why they're there. That this is supposed to be kind of part of a healing process for Peter. So luckily, they were able to kind of go through. So. Uh, while that ends up happening, um, 
Fred Wynn is trying to hack into uh, the stuff because he's hoping to try and back channel this back to like who's at the top of all this. And then obviously, like while they're waiting, uh, Peter looks and sees Clara and she hands him headphones being like, you know, uh, what you, basically what kind of music do you like music? He was like, no, not really. And she's like, well, maybe you should listen to mine. And that kind of got him an idea of like, wait, we've been hearing music all over the place. So like all we have to do is basically find out like whoever it is is using this company as gathering um, because obviously the um bender um eldon owns this company so it's all about the music stuff so obviously like all you have to find is this particular playlist that has all the songs that were used over the course and i was like oh that's really interesting like like kind of uh back channel work all of this i thought was pretty dope and they end up finding out and it's like security's on the way fred win ran for him i was like i think i'm surprised peter never called him out for it it's like that's kind of messed up and you know and then like um Peter's trying to get away and he slams his face into a wall. He's like, oh, he's like, he, and he moves his hand, his nose is blade. He's like, oh, is it bad? And the guy grabs his arm and says, ow, ow, that's my hurt arm. Ow, ow, you're hurting me, you're hurting me. That's my hurt arm. And then he takes off running. I love it. And then um, I expected Fred to kind of show up to kind of be by his side, but like uh, Peter just jumps down and ends up falling and hurting himself. And he's like, Peter, I got the address. He's like, are you okay? It's like, yeah, that was pretty impressive. But Peter couldn't hear anything out of his ear and everything. I loved it. Uh, where the situation is, um, as Peter's kind of limping away and he was like, actually, that was pretty impressive. I figured I might as well say that to you just in case, like, basically, if Peter ends up dying from his injuries, he's like, yeah, I can't hear a thing you said. And it's like, but that was pretty impressive because, uh, Fred Wynn gave him compliments. He doesn't really compliment people. So it's just, I, like I said, all this nice growth. And then at the end, we see the whole situation with, um, Janice and, um, Simone, um, at the very end where, you know, they're at, um, halting and obviously it has, you know, um, cause we, cause I was wondering, it's like, was it like one of Janice's children that was here? It's like, no, it turns out Janice herself was here. And I think it's because probably back then they didn't know what uh, postpartum depression was. Cause for her, it's like, oh, I keep crying. It's like, I'm gonna stay here. And it's like, I think for her, I would assume it would have to be a situation like that because at that point in time, medically, they probably hadn't discovered like what postpartum depression was like, you know, so she probably thought like something's really wrong with me. But it's kind of a very natural thing, you know, that like a lot of mothers go through after giving birth. So I think that's what that kind of stemmed from. But uh, lo and behold, they get reunited. And I love that Simone looks at Peter and like it goes slow-mo which is like the inverse of when they ran into each other again in episode one and it's like she was in slow-mo and music was playing and she's looking at him like whoa so i think she started kind of seeing peter she already kind of it's not even it, she already liked peter but i think in that moment like oh because even later on she's like oh you're looking a little you know rugged and it's like oh my god what happened to you peter and for like don't worry he coagulated over here he's like yeah i couldn't hear out of one ear but they basically pieced it together basically explaining everything it's like oh this is what we were doing oh this is what we were doing it's like Hey, everyone's you unite. It's like, yeah, we tracked it back to whoever's behind this game is at the top of the effing, you know, uh, penthouse. And so as they're kind of getting there, and like, you know, Simone's sitting by Peter and being like, yeah, so it's like, you're looking, uh, you know, you look like you've been kind of through the shit pan, but it's like, you know, you look really, you know, rugged and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm like, oh, this is super adorable. Look at you two being so cute. And he's like, yeah. And you can tell she kind of was like, because especially because it was playing some lovey dovey like stuff like when she was looking at him, I was like dude it's like because because it's sad thing is she kind of had Peter's like oh let's just stay friends but I think for her she's willing to kind of take that step forward because I think she realizes like how she feel, like fully feels about Peter I don't think she's as afraid as she was uh back then in um episode two I think but uh it's like you know this is the for Peter. It's like this is the last ga uh, day of the game, so might as well take you know not be afraid to take any risk, right? And then she's like, right. And then like the bell, the ding of the elevator, and it's like I'm like I was almost hoping because almost sounded like she, I was like, are you about to? Are you two? Come on, come get together already. You two are so adorable together. But they go up to like the penthouse room. At first, I thought it was interesting when like Fred was asking her to like she was going to turn like someone was going to turn off the faucet, but. Uh, he stopped her. I thought it was because it was because the water was hot or something. But like, I guess it's like so you don't leave any fingerprints behind because the room was trash and everything. Last thing we want to be uh, uh, incarcerated because of our connection to this. And they go upstairs and the door is locked. Freaking Peter being the badass kicks it in and it's like whoa. And then they hear a message on repeat and we see Octavio and Commander Fourteen side by side saying the same line. So 
I guess, you know, further insinuating, like, how deep this runs. Because, obviously, we'd already set it up that, like, Fredwin had discovered, like, they are basically the same thing. Like, especially when at that performance, um, in Fredwin's episode, we, no, it wasn't, yeah, because, like, in Fredwin's episode, episode show, they, like, oh, the Elsewhere Society wasn't supposed to show it. So, it's, like, the Jejun Institute kind of doing their own thing, and they have, like, some fake, uh, Elsewhere Society showing up, so it's not the real Elsewhere Society, which also begs the question where's the rest of uh, Clara's friends that we kind of learned about last episode, where are they? Remember, because you had that dude at the very end who ended up uh, kind of just closing the door. It was almost like, oh, like, once she was gone, it's like all memory of her disappeared, which that could have all been a metaphor for the fact that, that she'd been completely wiped from um, records or whatever, but nevertheless, a lot of really interesting things, a lot of uh, great uh, chemistry built by uh, these different teams that I really appreciate. I'm curious to see where all this ultimately ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.